well, let's uh, let's move on to the Geek Speak portion of our show then, and talk about Gig Jam 48. So uh, before we get to that, though, Graham, if you would give us a little bit of a background on uh, Glitch Games and what you guys are, how long you guys have been around, and what you're about. Uh, me and Simon, the other, the, well, the artist, uh, we've been together as Glitch Games since uh, January 2012. So that's about well, a year and a couple of months. Uh, we've released about a dozen or so apps, but only one to any real actual success. Uh, and that's uh, Forever Lost, our sort of point and click uh, adventure game type thing. Just think Lost City, but a bit darker, really. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so. Is, do you have a theme or what kind of games you like to produce or I mean Forever Lost is uh, is very successful so are you just going to stick with that as a franchise or I'm going to start we're going to stick with adventure games for the foreseeable future until uh, they drive us insane basically but yeah for the we, we enjoy making them they're a lot of fun they just uh, the amount of work into them it's relatively short payoff for like a year's work for a three hour game is a, is a little annoying at times sort of like just finished released within a day and then everyone's saying right where's episode two then wait a year it's a little annoying <laughs> but it's it's paying the bills and it's quite fun so it's okay so yeah but we every now and again we, we our other apps have all been very short sort of a few weeks in just to keep us from going completely insane really so we'll probably keep doing that every now and again as well so it sounds like you prefer the shorter games is that uh, it's not that I prefer them, it's just there's less work, which I prefer less work, so that is a nice payoff. But a lot of them also, we've taken stuff we've learned from them and put that into the Forever Lost as well. Lots of the puzzles and some of the gameplay mechanics are straight from other games. Um, so the more little games we do, the better the big game gets, so it's sort of worth it. Everything builds together, which is why we reference every game inside Forever Lost as well. It is yeah, I did. I did notice that when I was playing it, that uh, quite a few of the games had been referenced. So you are, you also have uh, blocks and mixes, which I actually yeah I, they're more audio type type uh, apps, but uh, I, I love them. I, I love a uh, block block. Yeah, I'm saying it right. Blocks. B -L it's good be, uh, blocks. We didn't really know what to call it, and. We thought we were being cool by putting an X in it, but yeah. turns out about a thousand other people were also cool and put an X in it, so it's hard to find it. Yeah, B L O X is the is the app. If you get a chance, check it out. You you put you uh, it's basically a a, a grid uh, of squares, and you you put your fingers on matching color uh, boxes, and uh, and then those go away, and they're replaced by new boxes with different colors, and then. It's multi touch but so you you can use both hands and multi fingers, and I found that you can even slide fingers around to get yeah. multiple stuff. And you know, you can. It's one of those things where I think you. I don't know if you guys did you intend it this way, where you could lay it down and actually play it with someone else. Oh no, that, yeah, that was well. The laying down was the plan, but okay. not playing with someone else. That was a that was a happy accident. Sometimes it's a hindrance when people play together, but when they work well, it they can get quite a high score. But yeah, sometimes it just drives people insane, which is even funnier. Yeah. It's almost like a. It's like it's it's like it's just like Twister in in some respects, mm. you know. On, on steroids. Yeah, yeah. Finger Twister. <laughs> yeah, that would probably been a better name actually. <laughs> Finger Twister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it provided you could have got around to the copyright issues or whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good point actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, so you also have Glitch Games that produces the games, but you also have a library, a Glitch Games library, and so tell us about that. What, why was that created um, and, and stuff like that? Basically, we obviously, like everyone else, make a lot of code, and we thought, well, I thought, being a coder, to neaten it up, release it, and hopefully everyone else can not only benefit from it, but also tell me where I've gone wrong and fix my mistakes for me, and uh, and hopefully everyone can benefit from it. And we use it all ourselves, because it's all the stuff we write anyway, so it's fairly thoroughly tested, but then extra tested by everyone else as well. And so far, people have been, well... They seem to be liking them and using them and enjoying that we've put them out there, so it's good. Do you feel like it's been been a good marketing tool? Uh, well, it was never really we never really intended it for that. I mean, people probably have heard about us because of that, but that was never really the intention. Uh, but I know that some people have said that they like the stuff and they've gone and bought a couple of our apps, which is great because obviously everything helps and it's nice to 
have people playing them. So, but it's definitely boosted it, but was never meant to be. Hmm. Okay, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I would think I, I would think it would, wouldn't necessarily be because I mean, it's obviously developers are the target audience for mm. libraries and and not necessarily consumers. But with uh, yeah. with maybe everybody writing articles about it and mentioning it throughout the the blogosphere, it seems like that would only help. Uh, yeah, it's 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 all more links back to our website. So yeah, I mean that's that's definitely got to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I, yeah, I just wanted to ask you that question because I figured, yeah. It seems like a it seems like a fairly uh, beneficial thing to do all around. Well, mm. well, let's talk about Gig Jam then. So, how did you come up with this idea of Gig Jam, and you know what what actually is Gig Jam Forty Eight? Uh, well, a lot of it came from uh, the Techority uh, Forty Eight Hour Challenge from uh, Peach a couple of years ago, yeah. and also I participated in uh, Dare to Be Digital in the UK back in two thousand and eight, which is like a ten week, essentially a ten week hackathon. Basically, the the combination of, of playing in that one and judging and taking part in Peach's one, and then the seeming lack of any more in Corona, it just seemed like a good idea to do it. Basically, and again, it's something to do for a couple of days to keep us busy and not killing everyone. You're right. So that's always fun. No, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, we, we had talked about doing something internally, uh, and then you guys popped up and said, "Hey, let's let's do this. You know, we're gonna, we're putting this together, and let's do this." And we we thought, "Well, great. Let's you know, I mean, any time that you that the community can put something together, it's it's even better, right? It's better than yeah, uh, because you guys can come up with better things than we can on uh, uh, you know these types of events and stuff. I mean, we we get kind of pigeonholed in in, in ideas, and the community is much more uh, creative in that respect. So, uh, so. So what what kind of games do should they should you produce on you know for this event? Is it is it going to be theme based? I mean, is it? What do you... There will be there there is a theme which will be announced pretty much sort of at kickoff, maybe a couple of minutes before, just for any internet issues. But yeah, I mean, there's a theme, but it's it's meant to be open to interpretation. And the more interpretive could be the better. Basically, just pretty much anything you can do in four simplify it a lot to actually get it done in 48 hours mm -hmm. but uh, yeah specific genre or, or anything like that it's just just a theme to try and make sure people can't just make the game beforehand and then just submit it basically okay not that anyone would you're right but. yeah at the, at the uh, global game jam in San Francisco uh, that was one of the first ones that I had been to and it was very interesting to see them say uh, okay here's here's the theme and they played like Probably two seconds of a, an audio clip, and it, and it's you know, of course, it sounded like a heartbeat, uh, and then and then that was it. And they're like, "Okay, go!" <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> so you're gonna do something like that? Are you gonna just sort of put it out there? Is it just... probably just put it out there? But although that does sound quite tempting to just do something quite completely abstract and just yeah. send people completely scrambling for the first hour or so just trying to work out what on earth it is but yeah it really it really was very it, was it really it, it lent like i said it lent itself to be most people in the room thought it sounded like a heartbeat uh mm. but it, you could have come up with anything really it could have been because it was just a kind of a the, the thump thump you could have come up with anything uh, yeah so it was very abstract in that respect so what uh have you ever organized a, a one of these events before or i can barely organized myself, let alone one of these sort of things. So yeah, it's it's going to be a learning experiment for myself as well. I mean, other than judging one, never never organized one. So so far, it's it's pretty much organized itself, really. So that was quite nice. It didn't require too much planning. Okay. Uh, uh, but no, it's it's good. Did, did, did has it been difficult to come up with sponsors? That was actually surprisingly easy. We thought we'd be trying to get blood from a stone, but it's pretty much we've put out emails to as many people as you could and pretty much every one of them got back saying yeah we'd, we'd love to a few people have said that we hadn't even thought of have come out and said look can we offer some prizes up sort of thing so no, that's been that's been relatively straightforward and it's just coming in quickly okay it's great and what kind of what kind of prizes have you been able to, to round up um we've got things like corona licenses obviously for the we've got a few of those uh, and then we've got various software tools like uh, Acon a graphics program and um Various ones like uh, we got some tutorials from Jay actually, uh, some video tutorials from Jay, and um, things like uh, promo slots on Thumb Arcade, which is sort of like a, a promotional site to help 
indie developers get their game. We're on there as well. It's definitely been helping, as well as um, some membership from other sites, uh, level helper, game helper sort of uh, package. Uh, basically, any Corona tool really that you can think of, uh, we've near enough got a license for it really for, for up for grabs, and a few other ones that are just general game dev really. Awesome. It's been great. Awesome. I noticed you had five spots, five winning spots. Yeah. Why, why did you decide on five as opposed to like, you know, well, the first, second, and third? That was the plan, three, but then so many prizes came in, it just seemed like kismet to just make five instead. Because, and, I mean, there's still plenty for every person, and, and uh, it just seemed like it would be more fun for everyone, really. Just more things to go for. Oh, that's, that's cool. So what are the rules for Gig Jam 48? What do you have to know? Um, relatively straightforward. It's 48 hours long from 4th of May, midnight to midnight on the on Sunday. Uh, you can be in teams of one, teams of 20. Uh, there's no limit as long as you tell us when, and the judges how many are in your team. Um, you can use prior artwork, prior code, again, as long as you declare that you've used it. Um, just get it done in 48 hours. Submit within an hour of closing via... Dropbox or FTP, that's all going to get sorted out and explained. Um, but basically, yeah, there's not really too many rules other than just have fun, really. <laughs> nice and simple, really. Okay. Do you think that there's a optimum size team? Um, well, we did it when we did the thingy, we did it in obviously two. Uh, I would imagine that more than five or six could get more complicated than anything because you might get a bit overconfident. Uh, and think you can get a lot more done than you can, whereas a person on his own, obviously like Ed's managed to get six, seven games done in a week, can prove that a one-man team can be quite unstoppable, really. So, I mean, it's really whatever you... You know, if, you, if you're a one-man person, then it probably wouldn't be best to go find four other people that you've never worked with before and attempt to get something done. It's, right. it's probably more on a personal sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I saw that at, uh, in San Francisco that... Uh, there were three-person teams who seemed to work fairly well, and then there were five-person mm. teams, and, and it seemed that the larger the team got, it more, uh, you know, you had more competing thoughts, more people to to move in the in, in the in the right direction. So, uh, I, I wonder how the online aspect of things will affect that. Yeah. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see. So, is there an entry fee? Uh, it's ten dollars, uh, which gets to about seven seven pounds. I think that is. So I mean, it's it's again, we're not trying to make a profit off this or or retire early. It's mainly just to cover the fact that, well, we're giving up on the weekends worth of work and trying to get it together with new hosting because the last time we had anything, our site went down, so we have to get a bunch of new hosting to actually make sure it stays live. And also, we've taken a, a week off work just planning it and getting it done, obviously. So, but again, it's yeah, nice and affordable, hopefully for for everyone. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a. Uh, and if you if you win, I mean, you've got a. a was it yeah, like thirty? Yeah, like thirty three hundred dollars worth, worth of prizes. Yeah, so. <laughs> so it's, it's probably worth it, really. <laughs> Hopefully, right. And so, how you said? How will people submit their their projects? Was that? Did you say via FTP or what was that? Yeah, we're we're gonna have a a, a public FTP folder for everyone. Well, with everyone's username we're given to them, they'll be able to log in and submit it that way. But a few people have said that that might be tricky. So we'll also have a, a shared Dropbox account, and also if they can just have it uploaded anywhere, basically, and can give us a link. Uh, we can download it from them. It's it's nice and open. We just want to make sure people don't have any technical issues. Can definitely get it to us. I mean, if they can, if it's small enough, they could email it to us. They could gotcha. put it anywhere really, as long as we can get access to it. Okay, yeah, that's a little different than than most, right? Uh, yeah. So if if they if they have their own web server or their own hosting or their own Dropbox yeah. or whatever, you don't care, right? Okay. Pretty much, yeah. I mean. I mean, and I'll just then, once I've got all of them, I can then send them out to the judges and because uh, we can put them on our NFTP at that point if no one else can and then give them to the judges that way. Okay. And so where where will you be announcing the results? Where or when? Where? Where will be... Uh, it'll be on the Gig Jam, on the Gig Jam page, which I think you've linked at the beginning, but we can link it again, obviously. And, uh, and on our blog and on the Corona forums, Twitter, Facebook, oh. everywhere we can, really. And to the people individually, once it's done, just to make sure they definitely, uh, definitely saw the posts. Okay. And when when do you think that that'll be posted? Um, we're hoping within a within a week or two. It depends how many entrants there are and how many actual people manage to submit, sort of thing. And 
we've got five judges, I think, so hopefully we can get everything done uh, relatively soon, but obviously we don't want to force the judges to take too much time out of their own work just to, just to expediate it. So we're, we're giving them a, a lax for them to make sure they don't rush anything. And what's the judging criteria? What, what, what factors are you going to look at? Uh, we've got, um, well, four, four criteria. Uh, it's like um, it's creativity, uh, fun, sort of the interpretation of the theme, how they stuck to the theme or, or what they did with the theme, and sort of just the general overall feel for the whole, for the whole game, really. Okay, okay. So, so uh, is there going to be any sort of code review or anything like that, or is it just going to be the, just the, the, how the game plays itself? Pretty much, yeah. It's if the the judge would be thinking they are the final user, they don't. It doesn't matter how it was made or or what it looks like. All it matters is it it runs in front, it works or it doesn't work, sort of thing. I think. Okay. Cl clean code in forty eight hours would be a bit extreme and a bit unfair, I think. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've I've I've, ex I've participated in and and uh, some previous. Not, they weren't. They weren't game jams, but they were some you know coding uh, events like that and. Of course, I you know, like you say, I was always concerned about what people were gonna you know if they were gonna judge it based on the the, the merits of the code itself as opposed to the actual mm. end product, you know, and and uh, so I'm always concerned about that aspect of it. So, what's the when would be the last day to register for the particip participate? Because it's actually the coming this weekend, right? It's gonna be Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. Yeah, uh, well, it kicks off on the yeah the midnight, so the the last day would really be. That Friday, so that's the the third, I think, yeah, the third of May, sort of that time. But obviously, preferably before. But I mean, if you you can start, you can enter, but after that, but you're going to have a lot less time to do anything in. So yeah, the, the optimum time would be the third. But if you feel a challenge, sign up on the fifth and see what you can do in two hours. Okay, so it's going to be from midnight Friday, well, which will be Saturday morning, and then yeah. till what Sunday Sunday midnight. Sunday at midnight, all, all GMT, um, then people can work out their time zones from that. Um, but yeah, keeping it thing simple for me, really. Yeah. Uh, midnight to midnight. Star Wars weekend, if that, if that helps at all. <laughs> May the 4th. So, it's a happy one. <laughs> nice little correlation. Okay, yeah. and so where should someone go to register if they want to partic participate? Where's the best place? Uh, if they go to uh, glitchgames.co.uk forward slash gig jam, G-I-G jam. Okay. It's all up there. Okay. Yeah, and we'll put a link in the show notes for sure, definitely. Uh, and that's just go on there and register, pay your ten bucks, and you're you're uh, good you're to done. go. You're good to go. Okay. Yep. And then after that, you just got to stay up for forty eight hours. <laughs> yeah. Get <laughs> uh, some coffee, basically. Yeah. See, paying ten bucks and staying up for forty eight hours. Uh, you know, it's it's like going uh, paying to go to a marathon. You know, you 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 do all the training to get to the marathon. And you do all the training for free, but then you pay to actually go to run the full marathon, <laughs> you know. So it's kind of like it's kind of counterintuitive. Idea, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing how how many people t participate, see what comes out of it, and just you know to, to see all that kind of stuff. Now, is there a hashtag for the event? Should people be using it uh, throughout the event? Uh, if possible, yeah. It's uh, hashtag uh, Gig Jam, and yeah, it'd be great if people could sort of rally around that and post screenshots or or anything sort of make sure everyone can see what everyone else is doing and make it a big community thing really. Yeah.